Hello, and welcome to the Wade Borth Podcast. I'm your host, Wade Borth. And in every episode, my goal is to get you to think differently about how money works and ultimately to empower you to take control of your money and your personal financing system. Hello, and welcome back to the Wade Borth Podcast. Today, I want to talk about legacy planning and generational wealth. Man, if you haven't heard these terms just thrown around like crazy the last five years especially, uh, you really haven't been listening because it's something that's being talked about and the question is why. I think most people know why, right? So this baby boomer generation, which is one of the wealthiest generations on earth, across the, across the earth, because they have about a million dollars average net worth with the baby boomers, that asset or that wealth it has to transfer and it's going to be transferring to that next generation of to, to the millennials now me personally i miss the baby boomer generation so and i don't know that i'm going to be receiving much much transfer but that's neither here nor there but i know i know this just from personal experiences that those dollars have to go somewhere they're going to be transferring and so the question is and there's a, a lot of questions and why this is such a big topic too is that there's about 85 trillion dollars that's going to transfer from that generation down to the millennials. So let's think about that. It's about $85 trillion. Now, there's a lot of numbers, a little higher, a little lower, but that's kind of the one that kind of sticks out and is consistent uh, when I look at it. So there's a ton of money that's going to be transferring from one generation to the next. And there's two things I think about when I see that. It's One is how can we transfer it the most efficient way possible while giving the baby boomers some certainty that they want. Because here's, here's what I discovered working with my clients and my family and really anybody else is that anybody that has those dollars, they want, their intent is they want their kids to be better off, typically, you know, more than likely. They want their kids to be better off than what they had it. And so they want to be able to pass something along to their kids. And so what's going to happen is those dollars are going to move it. The second part of it, and I'll get to this in a little bit, is... What are we doing to set up our set our children up or these baby or these millennials up for success? So let me ask that question again. What are we doing to set up that millennial generation for success? So I'm going to go back and just talk about this transfer. But what I see with the transfer and this thought, like, hey, I'm going to save this money, and I've saved and I've sacrificed our whole lives to raise our kids and save money and so we did without things that we because i wasn't part of that generation i'm actually part of the millennial generation one of the very few first years of the millennial generation but they've saved and they sacrificed and now they're in their retirement years or they're really close to retirement years and they're going huh i need to i want to pass this on i don't need to i want to give this to my children but now it creates a scarcity mindset in the parents and the baby boomer parents because they don't want to lose this money and they're afraid they might run out I mean, these are things that are common discussion amongst the people I know that are baby boomers. So it's the talk at every coffee table. And so they don't want to run out of money. I mean, they want to pass something along. But they've been taking a common approach to this. And the common approach is, hey, save enough money, and then now we want to deplete our assets over our lifetime. How much can we take out? There's this thing through Monte Carlo modeling called uh, the 4% rule, which is really more like the 3% rule which gives you about a 90% probability if you take 3% of your portfolio out each and every year that you will have $1 left the day you die. I mean, they run uh, thousands of models that saying if you have a stock and bond mix, you have a 90% likelihood of having $1 the day you die, you know, if you're married the day the last couple or person of that couple dies. And so what does that mean? Is that how there's that scarcity? So we can take out 3% of, of a million dollars so what's 3% of a million dollars? It's $30,000. That's not much. But the point is they're willing to sacrifice so they can transfer that. So is there a better way? And there's absolutely a better way. Absolutely a better way. You can buy certainty that you're going to pass an asset onto your children in the most efficient way possible. And that's, this is what the wealthy do. And this is what the wealthy understand is that there is a great way to do it. And they use whole life insurance to transfer those assets. So if you're using whole life for, for your IBC strategy, hey, that's great. Just understand that this added benefit that's there is that death benefit. So when you want to start thinking about how do I transfer this asset or an asset to my children, 
that's there to do it with. And it's the greatest asset in the world because it's, it happens right at the right time. When you graduate from this world, that asset now is transferred over to your children. So there's no selling, there's no hassle, there's no having to clean out a house, there's no changing title, there's nothing else besides receiving a check from the insurance company. That's how quick and easy that transfer can be. The other side of that equation is it kind of gives you a permission slip to spend all your money. Think about it. You know your asset, that, that amount of money you want to transfer to your kid, that's it's a million dollars and you have a million dollar life insurance policy. You set that aside and then it gives you permission slip to spend a million dollars of your cash assets or your stock and bond portfolio or whatever it is. And so you're going to find a lot of freedom by doing that. So that's the exciting part of kind of having that strategy in play. And the other side of that strategy is you might go, hey, I want to be able to pull more money than just the 3 or 4% from my portfolio. Well, there, there's an option where if you have cash value in your policy, a lot of cash value in your policy, and that's what we're going to encourage you to do. When the market's down and tanking and you need a distribution, you don't take it from the part that's getting beat up. You go back to that asset that you have that's a guaranteed asset. That's the beauty about life insurance. They've got guarantees. Guarantees to pay the death benefit. How big is that? For people that want that certainty, right? It has a guaranteed cash value that never goes backwards. Unless you do something to make it go backwards. Take a distribution, take a loan, whatever it might be. It's guaranteed to grow each and every month. That's huge. It's, it's like rental property. So, again, that guaranteed asset gives you the permission slip to spend all your other assets. So, that's one thing. We can go deeper in that. I've done a previous podcast on that. But I want to bring this back up because I just, I read, there's been a bunch of articles lately in the news. And there's one from Forbes just here recently that it was just talking about this, just that transfer of wealth. The part that probably concerns me the most and the part that I really want you to listen to here is, and we have a lot of material at sagewellstrategy.com. Hop on our website, take a look, because there is a tremendous amount of material that you can dig into to, to understand this. But what are we doing to empower or to set our children up for success? If you look at, if you understand my banner that's behind me right now, it says legacy building, empowering others, right? That's exactly what we're talking about here. We want to build a legacy. So each successive generation beyond me, beyond you, will be in a position, again, not given something, but empowered to do something so they can grow into a much higher version of themselves, empower them to be the best that they can possibly be. And how do we do that? We do that we think we do that by giving them money, but a money without education will just be a fool's folly because that money will be gone because it's kind of what we've been conditioned to believe. Listen to the rest of our podcast. We talk about conditioned thinking a lot and the idea that we can just give money to our kids without having any discussion about it, without having any strings attached to it is a little foolish, quite frankly. And why don't we talk about money? Is it seems to be a bit of a taboo subject, but we should have that conversation with our children say, hey, when I pass away, there's going to be, you know, $10 million of, of death benefit. What's your plans with that? You know, with a 17-year-old? Yeah, that might be a little bit of a different conversation than you have with a 27 or a 37-year-old, even a 47-year-old. But what have we done? What have we empowered them to do to be successful, to find success with that? Have they read Nelson Nash's book, Become Your Own Banker? Because in there, he makes the point that he says, if you took all the money in the world and you equally divided it amongst all the population, within 10 years, 90% of that money would be back in 10% of the hands, which it is right now. That's because people that receive money that don't have education, it flows out, it flows away from them, it never flows back. And he makes the point, he says, what's your plan to have that money flowing back to, into your family system? Now, I find immense pleasure and joy when I'm working with a client. And he points to the wall that's over his fireplace and he says, someday my kids are going to point up there and there's going to be a picture of me up there on the wall above the mantle and say, that's the man that started a family legacy. That's his dream. That's what he wants to do. Because he wants to take his kids out of the bondage of being, to, of being indebted to banks and taking control of their family. And then never going into a, fam into a Wells Fargo ever again to get a loan. He would rather have them come to the family bank and doing it from a family position. And so that's his idea of legacy. And that's how he wants to empower them to take control. And it's through a lot of education. It's through a lot of conversation. And we're here to help with that. Both of those. We got tremendous amount of education on our website. We have tremendous amount of capacity to have. I love having conversations with the family because 
some people will get it right away and some people take some time to go, huh, I don't get this or I don't understand it. And we have to unwind a lot of the conditioned thinking that we've, that's been out there in order to have them kind of accept what's really going on. Because my job isn't to sell, my job is to educate. And if I can help you understand and know what's going on, you're going to know exactly what to do once you know what's going on. So our job is to give you that kind of information. But you have, have to ask yourself, am I open-minded enough to be able to want to hear this? Some people, quite frankly, aren't. But you have to be open-minded enough to say, yeah, maybe there's a better way. And just imagine if you're out there and somebody is just killing it, right? Their job is great, their family life is great, and their spiritual life is great, and their community life and their business life is all great. Don't you want part of that? Or don't you want to look at there and say, man, what are they doing to get there? Well, that's what we're offering. So, again, just imagine if you had that ability to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, teach me. Help me understand what the problem is and what the solution might be. And we'll show you a process. We have products. We'll talk about how we can position a whole life to solve the transfer of wealth, as long with this idea behind infinite banking to say, what's the process that we can get our family and ourselves to take control of that banking function and now take control of our finances. So we just don't give our kids a big chunk of money with the expectation that they're going to grow it to a bigger chunk of money. Because without knowledge and understanding, how is that going to happen? It's really setting them up for failure. So anyhow, go onto our website, sagewellstrategy.com. I'd love to get into this much deeper on a personal conversation with you. So if you want to talk deeper about this, let me know. Give me a call. But again, go to sagewellstrategy.com, book an appointment, and we'd love to have that conversation with you. If you're enjoying this podcast or know anyone else that might be interested, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and please leave a review. This will help this podcast reach and help more people by ranking higher in searches and ultimately help more people get out of financial bondage. And don't be afraid to share this podcast with your friends and family. We can be easily found on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 